an easy way to infinity. There you are, welcome back. Uh, an easy way to infinity. Fascinating. I, I'm trying to come up with an interesting way to you know, hook you as an audience. And it's interesting because we had this video on the schedule and then this morning I open up YouTube and I take a look and Joan over at Proper Printing releases infinitely print on the 3D print mill. And I was like, that's nearly the exact title we were gonna have for this episode. And so I got into it. So let, just, just to pay respects, first, Carl over at Knack 3D is the one who kind of inspired this with being able to go into Idea Maker, find a section of model, and then find where that is in the G code for the print, and then hand edit that with M808 G code commands to repeat a section. And in his video, it shows you printing a chain. Cool. So Jean over at Proper Printing, really cool. He used LabVIEW, a custom-built LabVIEW application to analyze G-code and find repeating patterns and then allows him to print an infinite chain. He also consumed some vegetation. So if I'm to find patterns, do I need to find a substance? <laughs> <laughs> For my video, what I'm gonna do is different than Carl and different than Jean as well because I'm gonna use Kirimoto from Gridspace. It is a free slicer that runs in a browser local on your computer, which means it's not cloud-based. <laughs> because it's browser-based, it means you could run it on a PC laptop, a Mac laptop, a tablet, you get where I'm going with this. And the model I'm using is the same one that Carl used in his video. I believe it's by uh, Herb Links, and I have a link to the model down in the description, as well as Kirimoto from Gridspace. So if you want, pause the video, go load it up, and you can follow along. So in this video, I'm not gonna show you uh, Kirimoto general commands or how to set up a machine or anything like that. We're going to assume that the CR30 profile that Kirimoto has is awesome. And in truth, it is. So we've got the model loaded in Kirimoto and look at that. We can move around, we can scale it up and we can see that there are sections that we need to define in order to print infinitely. And those sections have to just appear one right after the other. So with this model up, what I can do is go over to slice and then click it. It's gonna take a moment, it's gonna slice the model and then we've, we've got the slices. And in fact, at the bottom, you've got a range selector and you've got a little grabber on one end and a grabber on the other end. And it allows you to select ranges of slices, which is kind of cool. You can go from the left, you can go from the right. So from here, we're gonna follow Carl's uh, tutorial just a little bit. What we need to do is find the length in slices of one of the chains or one of the chain links and then we have to find the midpoint. And then what we need to do is go from the midpoint of chain link two to the midpoint of chain link four. Okay, it, it might seem a little bit complex, but essentially we're gonna define a range that the G code itself is going to tell the printer to just copy over, over, and over again until either it runs out, power goes out, or the number of times you've told it re to repeat is up. So for here, we need to find the length of a chain link. And for that, I'm just gonna move my view around and I can take this slider and move it until that one little spot disappears right there. And it looks to be layer number 71. That's great. So if we move the view around, now what we can do is find the layer where that chain link ends. If I bring this this way, right there. Perfect, layer 311. So now what we need to do is subtract 71 from 311 and we get 240, which is great because 240 is easily divisible by two to give us the halfway point. So 240 divided by two is 120. So what we need to do is either add 120 to 71 or reduce it from 311, it doesn't matter, but 71 and 120 is 191. I'm gonna move my view a little bit and I'm gonna move this over to 191. There we go. So we're almost there. So now what we need to do 
is find the halfway point for chain link number four, and that's gonna be the end of our repeating section. So this end grabber here, I'm gonna move it out, and I know that we've got halfway for number two, so number four is right there. We need to find the last layer for number four. There we go. So four, five, two. So if we take four, five, two, and we subtract 120, we get three, three, two. So now we know that the end section that we need to define is three, three, two. I just move that just like that. So if we zoom out just a little bit, we can now say that we've defined this section of G-code that the printer is just going to repeat. Now, how do we actually define that section as repeatable within Kirimoto? In Kirimoto, you go to, over to Expert and then click and then under Loop Count, you wanna define the loops or the number of repeats. And for this one, I'm gonna choose 500 because I want myself a long chain. You can leave it at zero to just repeat until you hit stop, but I'm, I'm just defining a range and I'm gonna give it 500. So then I'm gonna hit enter. So you can see at the top it says update ranges and now below, below expert you have ranges. If I click that, it gives me 191 to 332. And if I hover over that, it gives me loop count 500. This is great. So within this slicer, we've defined the range that we need to repeat and we've defined how many times we want it to repeat. So now what's left to do is to export the G code. For that, you go to slice, hover over, and then click export. It's gonna render it, it's gonna show it to you, and it's gonna give you a big old download button. So I'm just gonna download that to my desktop. Perfect. Thanks, Kirimoto. I'm gonna use Notepad++ to open it up. It's, it's funny, that's, uh, that's what Carl used, that's what Jean used, so that's what I'm gonna use. Take a moment and think about what your favorite text editor is, if you have one, and then leave it down in the comments. I'd love to hear. So now what we wanna do in the G-code is look for the M808 command because that's what's telling the printer to start and end a repeating section. So Control F, M808, and that brings us, okay, so this is interesting. So it brings us to just above layer 190. And one thing to remember, we defined 191 to 332. In tests, I, I found this. I actually thought this was a bug and I reached out to Stuart, the developer over at Gridspace that makes Kirimoto. And he said in his slicer, when there is a model with a, a flat wall, essentially as the first, there's almost, there's a first layer that has no instructions in it. And so the layer numbers just shift by one. Okay, well that makes sense. So if this is before 190, then we'll check to make sure that the other one is at the proper endpoint. So we see M808 L499. So the M808 is like this side of a, of a bookend and the L499 is the number of repeats. We told it 500, but it has to go through it first in order to start the decrement and I believe it's fine. So I'm going to just let that be. Below that is a very specific piece of G-code. G92, a value for Z, and a value for E. And that's there because, well, if you think about it, here's a great example. If you wanna create yourself looping video, and you wanna start in a position, dance a bunch, and then have the video loop at the end, you have to be back at the same position where you started in order for the loop to be seamless else you're going to be able to tell there's a cut point. Same thing in this G code. So this G92 Z value and E value is telling the printer that, hey, we are going to repeat this section. And so once you get to this point, always remember these are the Z and the E values you need to use when going forward. Kind of cool, right? If we do a control F and we look for M808 again, it's gonna show it to us right before layer 332, which is great. So if you imagine M808, it's bookends. And because our layer numbers were decremented by one, then it's at the beginning of 190 and it's at the end of 331. So that's perfect. Now all that's left to do is put this G code in the CR30 and hit print.
There we are. Look at that. We're in the room where we put the CR30s on the wall, and you can tell that both are going with chains. I've got Matter Hackers PLA over here, and I've got an unnamed roll of white PLA over here. Both are working, and this is great. I love seeing this because it really, truly brings about infinite Z in these 3D printers. No, these chains aren't as long as Carl's or as Jones, but at the same time, these printers haven't been going as long. These chains have a special place in mind because my wife said she wanted some chains for a Halloween project. And so this and the gold chain will probably be seen later on this month. But I'm really, really excited about this. And I'm, I'm really happy it's working out. I do have a challenge for you and for John over at Proper Printing. M808 are bookends in G-code. But if you think about G-code, it is code, and in code, you can have nested loops. So if an M808 is just a loop, then you can have M808s within loops. So loops within loops, and you can create some funky, incredible models just by looping G-code. And I would love to see some examples of this. I, I'm playing around with it myself. I find it very interesting, but I'd love to see what you do with it. Again, tag me on the socials. I'm at Joel Telling. Hey, listen, if you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in. And as always, high five.